Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as I do and are truly interested and possibly excited about learning more about them. Well, you have come to the right place. This clause starts off with the statement, the organisation shall plan, implement and control the processes, C 4.4, needed to meet the requirements for the provision of products and services and to implement the actions determined in clause 6 by, and I'll get to that soon, but before I continue, let's think about this. We are at the operation part of the standard where the focus shifts from the higher level system to the operation stage, relevant to your product or service. Prior to this, it was mostly about the system. It is time to shift your thinking away from the system and into the actual product or service or both that you provide. Knowing this, it is time to plan and implement the processes to control how you deliver your product or service to your customer. We do this by implementing the actions we came up with back in Clause 6. Let's back up to Clause 6 for a refresher then. Clause 6 is where we determined actions to address identified risks and opportunities and we establish quality objectives. So, for example, if here at Atoll, way back at Clause 6, we determined that an action to prevent the risk of non-conforming assessments being released was that we would implement an additional test and review from an external trainer and assessor, then here at Clause 8, Operation, is where we would implement that action. We would build this process into the operations section by determining resources and documented information amongst other things. Right, now let's move on with the next section of this clause. We have to implement the actions determined in clause six by doing the following. A, determining the requirements for the products and services. B, establishing criteria for one, the processes, two, the acceptance of products and services, C, determining the resources needed to achieve conformity to the product and service requirements. Let me break those sections down for you. To determine the requirements for your products and services, this will include how you will communicate with your customer for taking inquiries and orders, you then will need to define any applicable statutory and regulatory requirements and that you can deliver to meet these claims. You should also have a review process in place before committing to supply products and services, just to make sure that you can meet your customers' requirements. I always think of the construction industry here, where it is common to tender for work. The tender review process is one that requires the business to review what work the customer wants completed, where, how, and by when. It is up to the construction company and its operational processes to review the tender requirements, determine what they can directly provide or what they may need to outsource. And of course, do they have the resources to be able to deliver all of this on time and on budget? Then this clause goes on to say, D, implementing control of the processes in accordance with the criteria. E, determining, maintaining and retaining documented information to the extent necessary. Of one, to have confidence that the processes have been carried out as planned. Two, to demonstrate the conformity of products and services to their requirements. And then the output of this planning shall be suitable for the organization's operations. Documented information is an option for control of the processes at this operational level. 
what you might see for this documented information could be quite different depending on the industry. In construction, it is common to have a project management plan or quality project management plan or PMP for short. In these PMPs, you will find all of the information you need regarding what they are to deliver, how, who, and when. A PMP is a great document for an auditor to review and follow up at an operational level. A PMP is a great document for a business to have to manage and control the delivery of their product. Then, if you're in a manufacturing environment, this documented information might look completely different. I do some work for a business that designs and manufactures commercial grade covers for pools and dams. Their operational documented information is a job pack. The job pack has the designs, the material, the measurements, the testing, and even how to fold the finished product. This is how they control their operational processes. This clause has a couple of final sentences to go before we can finish up. They are, the organization shall control planned changes and review the consequences of unintended changes, taking action to mitigate any adverse effects as necessary. And then finally, the organization shall ensure that outsource processes are controlled, C8.4. This means that things don't always go as planned. You can have a project management plan or a job pack, whatever is relevant for the type of work you're doing, but things can change, whether they are control changes, which could be the customer has requested something different, or they could be unintended, which could be a non-conformance identified. For control changes, I would simply go back to the process you defined in clause 6.3, planning of changes, which is essentially using what you already have in place anyway. And for unintended changes, I would suggest you use the non-conformance procedure you should have in place. You don't need to create anything new. And of course, when it comes to outsourced processes, which are suppliers and contractors, there needs to be controls around the activities that they conduct at an operational level. I will remind you that this last sentence of the clause says in brackets C8.4, which is exactly what I am promoting too. Clause 8.4, control of externally provided processes, products and services is a great detailed clause of ISO 9001. So be sure to check the video out for clause 8.4 to get all the details there. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly, you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.